Hey everybody, welcome back to Creating Scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today we are going to add, this is part two of using the SDK menus to create an airport. Today we're going to add an airport, we're going to create a new project, we're going to add an airport, and we are going to add uh, the runway. Okay. Um, videos and then subsequent videos are going to build on what we're doing um, so we're going to be looking at the menu system and creating one and we will go for there if you haven't subscribed please do i really appreciate that hit that notification bell uh, and if you feel inclined to support what i do here making scenery and these videos and stuff please buy me a coffee.com slash my physical world Let's look at some information you need to start with. First of all, you need a working uh, folder. So I have scenery projects. So simply, I'm going to be in my scenery projects and I'm going to create a new folder. Even though I have a 5 alpha 1, I'm going to create a new one so I don't mess with my guinea pig airport. And I'm going to call this 5 alpha 1 new. Okay. And then I'm going to go into that folder, and that's where we're going to generate our new airport. Okay, notice there's nothing in there right now, but there will be when we continue. Now, let's look at some other resources. Some of the other resources you're going to need to make your airport is uh, some type of real-world reference such as um, this is the Huron County, Ohio uh, Appraisers or Assessor's Office uh, or Auditor's Office. They have, they're in control of all the geographic information systems. Okay, so this is their, this is their site, has up-to-date information 2022. Okay, so this is the site that I get the most up-to-date information aerial photos that kind of stuff or you can also use google earth which we're going to kind of use today uh, the auditor site is having some issues but we're using we're working on this small airport five alpha one it has one strip 2810 has a few buildings these are fairly new the fbo is just an old converted farmhouse Okay, uh, we're not going to do any modeling. Uh, I'll talk about that later. We're going to be working on the infrastructure of the airport, okay, and using the menus to do it. Now, down here, this is not a runway. This is the Summit Motorsports uh, Raceway, which is a drag strip. Okay, this is where they hold the, uh, I think, the international hot rod association uh world championships or national championships one of those two this is a scenery package that i have created and is available on flightsim.to for free okay it's not part of the airport i could have made it all this one scene but this is a separate uh package than the airport all right so we have the visual uh, references now for the airport uh, infrastructure air nav is the best place to go in the United States for airports um, if you are not in the United States uh, making airports I'm not familiar uh, where to get this information uh, in every country in the world but if you're watching this uh, video and you know and you're not in the United States and you know where these resources are, put that in the comments. Let us know where you're getting your, your airport data. Most of you, a lot of you probably already know, okay, but I don't, okay. I don't do many airports outside of the United States. But AirNav gets you all types of data, up-to-date data on your airports, Okay, so here we have the uh, runways 1028. 
it gives you all the frequencies and all that kind of stuff. Most of you guys know flight na uh, air nav, okay? Uh, I I have air nav plus to show my age. I have these hard copy hard copy books. This book happens to be all of Ohio in Indiana, but it's twenty years out of date, <laughs> okay? But it gives you the characteristics of all the runways, their length, their width. Uh, lighting, all that kind of stuff. All right. And so we're going to pull some information off here to make our airport. All right. And plus you got your approach plates and all that kind of stuff that you can use for reference if you're doing nav data kind of stuff. But for this tutorial, we're not be messing with the nav data or, or anything like that. Matter of fact, this airport is pretty much GPS. It's not you know, that's as precision as it gets. No ILS, nothing like that. Okay, so those are the resources. We are going to go into the sim and get to work. Let me pause and do that. Okay, we're in the sim. And as always, oh, by the way, if my image freezes over on the left, it usually uh, likes to freeze. I've updated my OB OS OBS, but if it freezes up, I'll shut this picture of me on the left down. You guys don't need to see me anyway. So we're in the sim. So I'm simply going to go to the world map. And we are going to type in our, our airport, which is 5 Alpha 1 in my particular case. And we're going to spawn at that airport. And I'm going to click a parking spot so my airplane is not up and running. Uh, it's a good idea to always have your, when you're working on your scenery, to have your weather be clear skies. That way it doesn't have to render clouds and all rain and all that kind of stuff while you're working. Because it does use uh, sim resources every time that you're in the SDK. All right. But if you want to see the effects of rain and snow on your buildings, that's when you turn your weather on to take care of that stuff. So we're going to ready to fly and we are at our airport. Okay. If I hit the insert and go to the drone, hit R to go up, arrow keys, we can take a look around. All right. And two and eight is up and down. There's two. All right. And so there's our airport. Okay. There's our precision lines. Uh, and we have some markings on the on the runway okay they're not this runway is in pretty rough shape uh, in real life so that's how we're gonna make it uh, the buildings positions they're accurate they're okay couple long we're not going to be worried about the models in this video we're going to be concentrating on the runway and then there's this beacon tower that's not there in real life and we'll, in another video we'll show you how to get get rid of that the fbo is <laughs> simp sorry <laughs> hiccup uh the fbo is a simple old far farmhouse uh and later on we'll measure we'll m We'll make, I'll make that and put it in there later. All right, so I'm going to hit insert again, go back into the cockpit, and we are simply going to add. Make sure that you're on in dev mode. If you don't remember how to do dev mode, just go to options, down in developer, and then turn dev mode on, and you'll get these menus across the top. So we are going to go to file, and we're going to go new project. Okay, and we need to give it its uh, starting location, right? So I'm going to hit these three dots, and I'm going to migrate to our new location, which is Scenery Projects, 5 Alpha 1 New, which is up here. And I'm simply going to select that folder. So that is where we're beginning. Okay. Project name is uh, 5 Alpha 1 Norwalk. Okay. 
And my company name is My Physical World, so I always put a MPW, and when it builds the package, it's going to put MPW in the front. Okay, so we're going to create a create the new project, and we are going to add in a package, and we're going to go next, and we're going to choose airport, and the display name will be five alpha one okay go next and we're going to overwrite the existing airport uh, in the sim when we put this in our community folder so we're going to create the airport so now we have our project almost ready the inspector pane you have your version and I never make my whole number until I'm ready to publish for the first time. Then I'll change this to a 1. So any other changes, I start increments of 0.1. Okay? So we're going to leave it at 1 right now. For manufacture, that's for aircraft. 5 Alpha 1 is the title of our project. Okay? And it is a content type is scenery. It's not an aircraft, not, it, okay, you get, you get the picture, it's scenery, okay? Now, we're not going to build it yet. We don't need to build anything yet until we make changes, all right? So that's the inspector. And just so you know, I have, we are going to, uh, when we select the BGL, okay, and we come to inspector we're going to load that into the editor okay now notice that I have all of these panes open but in their minimized position okay if none of these show up like I have them you simply depending on which one which area you're working on okay if you go to view if you want the inspector, you make sure that in the project editor, you show the inspector. All right. And that's this one up here. All right. But for these other ones, these, uh, the properties, gizmo, material, and objects, those are all controlled by the scenery editor. So you'll go view and then check mark the ones that you want open. Okay. So knowing that, we now have an airport in our scene, Huron, uh, Norwalk Huron, right? So I'm going to select that and I'm going to zoom out, hit the uh, left alt button and middle mouse button combination of keys and stuff, right? Okay. And you'll notice that this airport has a perimeter. It's a pretty large perimeter around it. Okay. we need to add something to our airport okay first let's take a look at the properties of our airport so we're going to bring down properties and we're going to fill in some blanks uh, five alpha one is the ico there's the display name the region uh, it's probably midwest but you don't have to put a region um, usa for the country Ohio for our state city name which is the closest is Norwalk this just kind of helps searches okay and if you know the magnetic declination you can type in all that kind of stuff if you want to okay apply flatten means that it will flat flatten out the airport if necessary okay this one's not too hilly so we're good there the next thing now for most cases i don't mess with frequencies um, unless there's something drastically wrong or missing but let's come down here to the delete commands and here is a list of items notice that we have some aprons sitting here and we have the runway textures and all that kind of stuff we have we have taxi lines, we have that kind of stuff. 
if you're going to custom make all that stuff, then you're going to delete them from this list. All right. Now, like I said, unless they're drastically wrong or incorrect, I don't delete approaches. I leave them. Apron lights, I'll get rid of those because I'll make my own custom stuff. I'll make my custom aprons. Frequencies, I don't delete. Heliplads, this one doesn't have a helipad. Um, but you can delete it if you want to. Uh, I'm going to delete the runways because I'm going to create my own. Okay. Um, starts, we're going to delete those. The starts will be created automatically when you add a new runway. All right. I'm going to delete taxiways because most cases they're all wrong anyway. Uh, vector placements, boundary fences, jetways, uh, control towers. This doesn't have a control tower. This is not a control tower. This is a beacon tower. We'll get rid of that later. Departures, I usually don't delete. Arrivals, I usually don't delete unless there's something drastically wrong, and then I'll recreate those. Painted elements, I'm going to delete. Light supports, we're going to delete. Taxi signs, I'm going to leave ILS, terminal waypoints, and terminal NDBs. Okay? So those are the things that I usually create myself. All right. Now, since we have deleted, notice all of this stuff has gone away. There's no aprons. This is these aprons and lines and stuff are just from the satellite or aerial photography. Okay. They're not part of the airport anymore. In terms of the simulator so now we need to recreate all of those features so this video is primarily concentrating on the runway okay so we have a runway 28 10 28 is the primary all right so we're going to come over here to objects and we're going to change scenery to runway and we're going to add a runway, but first we want to designate what's the primary. And the primary is I'm going to select 28, and I'm going to, <coughs> I'm going to hit add. And it adds a generic runway out in the middle of somewhere else, right? But we need to move this over to where our runway actually is. Then we're going to go over to the properties of the runway and start changing some things. Okay, so first we're going to go configuration. The heading of this runway is negative 91. Okay, the length in meters for this particular runway, you get all this stuff off of the air nav or charts or whatever you have so if i bring up an air nav here is my 42.8 in feet here is my 12.83 in meters okay so these are uh, the dimensions of each runway okay so i'm going to use these numbers to enter in the next boxes so for the length of the runway it was 1283 right so I'm going to make this 1283 for the width what was my width my width in meters is 23 meters okay so we're going to come over here and make this 23 and for the altitude pattern uh, that We'll leave that the same. I'm going to use exclude vegetation around the runway. The runway number is 28, and there are no letter designations for either either runway. Now we're going to go to materials, and we're simply going to open up our material editor, which I already have. Remember, if it's not there, just go to uh, scenery editor uh, view. And then click material editor and it'll show up and i'm going to turn on bitmap preview preview go to asphalt because this is an asphalt runway and over here we see runway asphalt 
And we're going to replace that with cracked because it's pretty nasty looking. So where is that? It's around here somewhere. There it is right there. I'm going to left mouse drag and drop that on the material. And that replaces the material that makes up the runway. Now you can try to find a better looking uh, style if you want to. To replace that. It's probably more like this one. So I'm going to right left drag and drop that. Okay. It's kind of light colored right. I'm going to use my alt key, zoom in, okay, the orientation is incorrect, but we're going to take care of that later, I think, I'm trying to figure out, I can't remember, eh, we'll leave it for now, okay, because these stripes should go this way. Alright. Now let's look at markings. So we got material. Material is fine. Let's go to markings. This particular runway does not have edge markings. If we look at Google Earth. Zoom in. There are no edge markings on our runway. Okay. So that's what that means. Uh, threshold markings. Let's zoom out. Let's come. Let's uh, pan down to our. I'm going to minimize materials. Pan down to the 28 end. Okay. So our orientation of our runway is not really correct yet. So I'm going to go to the gizmo. And we're going to rotate. And I am going to rotate this runway just a skosh still not right the precision isn't all of that great and I don't think that catches up yeah it does so that's uh, minus 90.29 so I'm gonna So we're going to go, let's go negative 90.35. Let's go 0.4. No. Let's go 3.5.8. No. 3, let's go 3.6. No. 3.8. Three nine. Oh, I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about my internet connection right now, because I'm um, just in the scenery editor. But anyway, I want to get my runway to match a little better. I don't like the precision of. Sometimes the editor, but anyway, that's good enough for now. Go to translate, and we're going to come down to the left end of our airport. Okay, where was I? Oh, markings. We do have threshold markings at the end, which are those. And uh, do we have uh, touchdown markings? Uh, we have a center line. We have the number at the end right there. Okay. Precision markings. They should show up somewhere. So you're going to enter in all of the visible markings. All right. There's no extra pavement on the edges because there's no edges. Okay. Now, in terms of... Uh, transforming you can transform if you need to but we're not going to in this particular video now lights for this airport you get this off of, Na of air nav as well are 
lights on the center line. Okay, there are no lights on the center line. For pavements, okay, the primary threshold for this particular airport, see where the number is at the, e at the end of our total length of our runway, okay? The primary threshold is actually, um, what is it, uh, 203 meters away from the end of the pavement. So over here for the length of the primary threshold, I'm going to type in 203.302, and that moves our threshold up, okay? So it's almost where it's supposed to be, except I need to move my runway pavement down this way. So I'm going to zoom out, Alt, and then I'm going to drag this just a bit till my pavement is where it's supposed to be and my lines are lined up here okay so we're just gonna scoot that right there all right this may not be perfect but you guys will get the idea all right plus i need to drag my whole thing this way all right so that's closer to what it is in reality and the second, the secondary air, uh, runway, which is 10, has a smaller threshold. So we're going to choose secondary threshold. And we're going to make this one uh, 72.8472. So it is correct. There is no blast path and there's no overruns. Now we're gonna to go to approach lights. This airport doesn't have any, okay? It has end lights at the end of the runway, but it doesn't have any approach lights, all right? So we don't need that. Vossi, there are no Vossi. ILS, there are no ILS, okay? Except uh, one thing, is it the approach light? No, is it Vossi? I'm trying to remember. Uh, where is... There should be one that says end lights. Where's end lights? I can't remember. How come I can't find it? There's one that says end lights. And that's what I'm looking for. Oh, I remember where it is. For the end lights, there's lights at the end of the runway, but there's no, there's no approach lights. So on the primary lights, you're just going to click end lights. Okay? That's the only lights there are. Same with the secondary end lights. Okay? So lights will show up at the end of the runway. All right? And again, no Vossi. We can minimize the approach. We can minimize the pavements and runway starts. This is the last thing for this particular video is the start points of the runway. So if I pan over to the middle, you'll notice that there's an arrow here and there's an arrow here. Okay. Now, the arrows are still oriented according to the original orientation okay so I am going to uh, select uh, where was I start points okay so I'm going to come down here I'm going to edit the position the start points is where your airplane will spawn when you choose the runway to start so here's the edit position, and I'm going to translate that, and I'm going to slide the primary start down to where I want my airplane to spawn, and I'm going to spawn right here, right in front of the, right in front of the numbers, okay? Now, since that arrow is oriented toward the direction that the original runway was entered in when I added the runway. I need to rotate these a bit 
so they're straight down the runway and we are going to rotate that arrow so it looks straight down the runway okay then I'm going to alt left uh, middle mouse button and uh, come over to here and go turn off edit position for the primary turn on edit position for the secondary and do the same thing we're going to drag that start location down to where it is which is right here and we'll zoom in a little bit and we'll rotate that arrow so it's oriented correctly down the runway and move that toward the center again okay so this first video adding a runway using the menu system we've created our airport and we've created our runway itself okay now the next thing to do is to choose our project our package here open up the inspector now i always do this first i go to debug i go to console and notice we have 25 errors those are not any errors that you made during this process these are errors just because of the sim and before I build, I always hit the eraser and clear the console. And then I do my build. So let's save scenery first. And we are going to give it an increment of two, meaning I've done something already. And we're simply going to build our package. And yes, I want to save it for the first time. So we'll save. And we get zero, zero failed. We have zero errors. So our airport is good. So you can close out your console. And you can quit the sim. And then I will be right back and show you what has been added in the file folder. Okay, we're out of the sim. And I have my Windows Explorer. Here's our 5 Alpha 1 new folder that we created to begin with. And if I double click inside of there, you notice that we now have a package sources, package meta, packages, package definition, and an init file uh, folder. And we have our airport XML, our main XML for our airport. Now, at this point, this is where I go over to when I only do this when I first create my airports I go over to the SDK tools bin folder and I take I take this FS package tool I left I mean right mouse click and drag and I drop that into my project folder copy so when we go back into our project folder I have an FS package tool that I can build my package outside of the sim okay by just simply left mouse drop that on to the FS package tool and it will build outside of the sim okay now anytime that there's a sim update uh, or an sdk update i check the uh, build date of the fs package tool and if it's newer than the previous one then i'll replace it okay but august 11th 2022 it's it, it since we've had sim update 12 it's uh the sdk build for fs package tool has not changed so it's the same now inside the folder remember we have package sources but we have we don't have a model lib we don't have a material library we just have the airport data okay uh, here is the package that was built and this is the name there's the company name it's an airport and the name of the project was 5 alpha 1 Norwalk so that automatically makes the name of the package all right gives it a good unique name that doesn't interfere with somebody else's all right this is the package that you would copy into your 
community folder or upload it to uh, one of the many scenery sites I use flightsim.to okay the next video we're gonna put in some taxiways all right using the menu system uh, and uh, we will also you know upcoming videos I'll show you how to create uh, model libs and material libraries and all that using the menus so if, if you like this please give me a thumbs up make comments remember to comment of where you get your airport data if you're outside of the United States and I will see you guys on the next video see you later